It's worth having a closer look at primroses. As well as being beautiful, their flowers are hermaphrodite. Many flowers are like this. But where the primrose is different is that it exists in two different morphs, a thrumide and a pinide. If we look a little bit closer at these ones, you'll see that in the centre of the flower there is a hollow place and then there is a long pin-like structure with a pinhead on the end and that is the female part of the flower, the pistil. If we have a look at this flower, which is on a different plant, you'll see that the center hole is got anthers within it and insects that come along to um, pollinate it, like that little creature there, um, will take the pollen through to a pin-headed plant and um, that means that then there'll be seeds. So, pin-headed plants can't fertilize other pin-headed plants. Only thrum-headed plants can fertilize pin-headed plants. So that means that the genetic variation um, is constant, which I think is pretty neat for a small spring flower. To illustrate the differences a bit more clearly, I'm going to have a go at um, seeing if we can see a cross section of the primroses. So I'm going to cut through the centre like that and we'll see whether we can see how, what's inside. There we go. So this is the cross section of a thrumide primrose and you can see there's the anthers there, close by the entrance. Um, but there still is the female part of the flower, the pistil here. Um, and then you can see down here at the bottom, um, there'll be the place where the seeds are actually formed. And here's the cross section of a pin-eyed primrose. If you have a look here, you can see there's the anthers deep down inside. And then on a pin-like stalk, there we go, up to the top there, we've got the um, female part of the plant, the pistil. Um, and again, if we could cut down into this bit down here again where it's swollen, that's the um, place where the seeds will be formed.